All right, what's going on, everybody? So, uh, a couple of you guys have been hitting me up talking about LJ Ford. Apparently, he resigned with the Ravens. I don't know if this is true or not because I've been staying off the internet. It's April Fool's Day. I'm not about to get tricked. So, I'm actually going to go on Twitter. I've been off the internet all day. I've not gone to Twitter. So, I'm going to check right here. I'm going to look at the actual Ravens page to see if this is true. Because I'm not about to get tricked. Y'all like to be playing these jokes, man. I already saw what George Kittle was doing earlier today. I heard about that. So, like... I'm not about to get tricked. Oh. Oh, they did. We've agreed to terms with LJ Ford on a one-year deal. What is this worth? 1.1 million. This is real? They brought him back? Oh, they they brought him back. Okay. okay. All right, give me a second here. They brought him back. They brought him back. Okay, they brought him back. Alright, it's a different game now. They brought him back. Okay. Alright, switch it up then. They bringing people back, huh? We bringing people back, huh? We just bringing people back. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. LJ Fort, welcome back, my man. I'm not going to lie. I was scared. I was scared. I thought we lost him. I thought we lost him. This is really real. Yep, Jeff talked about it. Sarah talked about it. Yes, this is real. This is real. Sarah's right. This is not a... Yep, this is real. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, wow. Welcome back, man. Welcome back. Man, they, they did it on a one-year deal worth $1.1 million. They saved some cap space by cutting him, and then they brought him back on a cheaper deal. Wow. All I'm going to say is, I did not see it happening. Well, I'm not going to say I didn't see it happening. I was concerned. I wasn't 100% sure. Because when I first heard this, I didn't like the move. I didn't like the move. I didn't like them cutting this guy. I understood it was to save cap space, which I understand that part. You know, you're trying to make a big deal in free agency. I get it. You're trying to get more and more cap space. You're trying to make a big move via trade or signing someone. I understood. I understood. But with LJ Ford, he is such a productive player on our defense that I didn't want to lose him because my whole thing was that you don't get that type of production from a defensive player at that price. For the amount he was getting paid, he was overproducing, man. He was a he, he made an impact on this defense. He honestly should have had like what three or four interceptions on the season if a couple things just went his way. He had those interceptions, whether it was a penalty or something else. He could have had three or four interceptions on the season. So, like, you don't get this level of production from a defensive player at the price he was getting paid. So, when they cut him, my whole thing is, if he goes into the market, somebody going to offer this man a deal. Five, they, they, they could probably throw three, four, maybe five million at this guy for a one-year deal, and he's going to be going off to another team. So, now you lose a quality player that who was, who was on a cheap deal, a team-friendly deal. You're going to lose him to save some cap space. But, you know what? Despite that, they did also say that the Ravens were hopeful that if the numbers did work out and they did have the cap space, they were going to actually bring him back on a more cheaper, team-friendly deal. Well, they managed to pull off. And honestly, I got to say, it's really thanks to, you know, <laughs> some of his teammates, man. Thanks to the whole squad. Especially, I want to give a huge shout-out to, um, specifically, Calais Campbell and Brandon Williams. Specifically, Brandon Williams. Y'all been... Man, some of y'all were talking so nasty about Brandon Williams talking about, man, we got to cut this dude. They got to release him, all this other stuff. We don't really need him. They're just forgetting the impact he has on this on our run defense. They were really forgetting the impact this man has on our run defense. And they were talking about letting this dude go to save cap space so we can get a receiver. And I'm like, are you serious? Then all of a sudden, these people change their tune when it comes out that both Calais Campbell and Brandon Williams, they reconstruct, they reconstruct their deal to save cap space. They took a cheaper deal, completely reconstructed their contract to help save cap space, to give more cap space to the Ravens so that they can make a move of free agency. Those are two guys who are completely locked in with this team and they believe. They're, they're locked in. They're locked in on the culture. They're locked in on the message. They truly believe this team can win a championship and they're all in for that ride. So wh whoever was talking nasty about Brandon Williams, y'all owe him an apology. But yeah, the Ravens, man, they've been, uh, ever since that old LJ4 cutting thing, 
they made some moves. They made some moves to actually save a lot of cap space. Which, honestly, good on them. A lot of guys actually reconst um, reconstructed their contracts to help save some cap space, and it really helped out. So since they were able to make these moves and save cap space, hey, you got the money now to bring back LJ Ford on a cheaper deal. It all worked out. So I'm happy that this was able to work out. My own thing was just like, I, I just, I didn't think he'd come back because like I was thinking somebody's going to throw uh, something at him, a one-year deal worth $4 million, $5 million to come play on their defense because he's a very productive player. He's a very productive player. So like, I thought that could potentially happen. That's why I didn't want him to go to the market. But either one or two things happen. I'm not going to say it's concrete. But it's possible that the man was getting deals and just chose to, you know, he wasn't getting deals. First of all, nobody was calling him. No one's calling his agent. He wasn't, there was no market for him, which I kind of doubt because, again, he's a productive player who you could sign cheap and help out your defense. But it's either that or he was getting calls, but chose to reject it because he was already planning to come back to Baltimore. Maybe him and DaCosta, him in that front office, they had some sort of conversation about the situation, came to an agreement and said, listen. We're going to cut you the safe cat space because we're trying to make moves. But we are planning to bring you back. Once we get the cat space we need, we're going to bring you back on a cheaper deal. Maybe some sort of conversation like that happened. LJ Ford said, cool, I want to be here. I'm all in. I'm all for this team. Got cut and decided I'm going to sit back and wait. Once they get the cat space they need, they can come back. We can negotiate another deal that's fair for both of us on a much cheaper deal. And I'll come back and play for y'all. Maybe something like that happened. I don't know. But all I can say is, I'm just so glad he's back. Oh, my God. I, I understand all people are like, well, you know, if he's gone, that gives, the, you know, our, our young linebackers a chance to step up. Which they will, but still, you know, just, just he, he had one year left. That was my whole thing. He had one year left. Let's get an extra year to give those guys an extra year of experience before they get to fully take over. But keeping your veteran guys can definitely help. At the end of, you know, this upcoming season... If they choose to move forward from him, they choose to move from if they choose to move from him, they choose to move from him. Their one year deal is over. LJ Ford, if he still wants to play, someone else maybe will go off from a deal. If that's what the Ravens decide, so be it. But at the end of the day, I just didn't want to lose him. He had a year left. He wasn't even a free agent. I didn't see the reason to cut him at the time. Because I was thinking, man, somebody. Somebody was gonna pick him up. But maybe him and the Ravens had some sort of deal. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was already prepared for this, accepted the deal. And was just waiting until the Ravens can get cap space to make a move. Either way, no matter what happened, he's back. He's back with the Ravens for another year. And he signed on a much cheaper deal. Seriously, you know, we got to gotta be happy. Like, um, because what the Costic has done. Dang, man. Yeah. LJ Fort, Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, Nick Boyle, Chris Boyd, and Tavon Young. All of them. Reconstructed, reconstructed something. And because of that, we ended up getting $11 million in cap space. That's crazy. And, you know, of course, people were hoping they would use that cap space to sign a receiver, which they did. They got Sammy Watkins. But obviously, we're still waiting. Maybe some other move or trade coming up. I don't know. Who knows? Um, I've, I've definitely been hearing the talks about good old AB. You know, the Ravens having an interest in bringing in Antonio Brown, haven't heard much about that. I haven't really seen much reports regarding that, so I don't know how valid that is, but there has been some talks that the Ravens are interested in bringing Antonio Brown, and right now it seems like the race for Antonio Brown comes down to Seattle and, yeah, the Ravens. Because at the end of the day, the Bucks offered him a deal. They're not changing their number. The deal they offered him, they're not changing it. So he has a place to go back to. Everybody else in the Bucks signed the team-friendly deal to come back because they want to run it back. If AB wants to come back, the deal's always on the table for him to take. The deal they set is a deal they set. They're not changing it. So if AB wants to go back to the Bucks, he can. But if he can get more money somewhere else, hmm, he'll take it. So it, it seems like it's coming down to Seattle and Baltimore. So we'll see what happens with that. I haven't heard much about that. We'll see what happens with that um, in, the com in the coming days if we hear any more news. But yeah, LJ4 is back. He's back. He's back. I'm a mess, man. I've been chilling out all day, man. I told myself this April 1st, I'm not going to deal with all the lies, with all the jokes, with all the trickery. I don't want to get tricked this April 1st. So uh, I just, I stood off the internet. I just, I played some video games, uh, played some video games, did some schoolwork, 
listen to some music, watch, like, watch some TV, read a little manga. I said, nah, I'm just going to stay off social media and just chill out today because I was not about to get tricked with none of this. Because I already heard early on something about George Kittle. Apparently, I don't know, he, he, <laughs> apparently George Kittle was trolling Jags fans, talking about him being there. So uh, I'm not going not to deal with that today. But yeah, this is, this is great. This is great. I'm glad LJ Fort is back. He's back with the Ravens for another year. And all is well in the world. All is well in the world of the Ravens. Let's just see what else they're trying to do. Obviously, we still have some holes left and we still got money. To, we still got some cap to use, so we'll see what happens. Could a trade be coming up? I don't know. Could another signing be coming up? I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? But we'll be here to see what goes on, and we will cover it. With that being said, that's all I got. I'm going to get back to doing what I was doing. Uh, hopefully, this is true, because if this was an April Fool's joke, I'd be so pissed off. But it seems legit. The contract was signed. Everything's good. So, yeah, I'm glad to have LJ4 back. With that being said, that is all I got, and I'm out of here, man. Peace!